And it's always a delight knowing you're there. The program is Agriculture in Focus. Agriculture in Focus is a production of Pat Agro Media. Pat Agro Media is all about advancing food security and agribusiness. It's time you call everybody out because the next 25 minutes, I assure you, will be very, very interesting. As always, we have a bumper package for you. On today's episode of the program, we will be looking at wheat production in Nigeria. There's no gain saying that wheat is a staple in Nigeria, but how well have we fared in producing wheat for local consumption? Our interview will be centered on sustainability as far as wheat production is concerned. But as always before that, we'll go out to the streets, talk to Nigerians about what they think about our prospects as it concerns wheat production. After that, our main interview segment will come in. After the interview segment, Abigail Stowe will bring you some news that you can use. Simi Simpson will bring you Common Sense Agriculture. Common Sense Agriculture is that part of the program where I usually won't let the cat out of the bag. Why? Because I want you to make sense of it for yourself. We'll bring the show to a close with Trending Fields. Balogo Anthony will then host you. Trending Fields is that aspect of the program where we marry what's out there in the world of the social media and agriculture. Once more, thanks for staying tuned. The show starts now. I am Alpha Jackton. You see, there's a lot of uh, prospect for wheat farming in Nigeria because uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, land available for wheat production, particularly in the northern part of the country. And uh, Production is mostly done during the dry season, but of recent, some farmers are trying to go into the season. You see, the land is there, the farmers are there. So all we need to do is to engage uh, these farmers, train them, build their capacity, introduce them into it, and also provide them with the necessary input so that they can produce. Those wheat farmers in the villages, they should be encouraged to coordinate themselves into cooperatives, groups, approach financial institutions and get support from the government because government cannot go and look for individuals. But when they form cooperative, they have become organized. And so financial support can come in that way. I've been in the wheat business more than 15 years. And people have been buying it, especially people that have sugar level diabetes. They have their own wheat that they are eating. And people have been buying it. We have wheat bread. We have wheat that we can blend for them for consumption. The one that they can prepare, like swallow. And people have been buying it very well. I will just uh, encourage government if they can help farmers to put more, if they can provide money for them to put more in their farming, in their production, so that the wheat will be available for consumption. As always, thanks for joining us on yet another interesting interview segment of the program Agriculture in Focus. My guest is Mr. Tola Ogunubi. He happens to be the Public Relations Officer of the National Wheat Farmers, Processors and Marketers Association of Nigeria. Sir, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Yeah, pleasure being here. Thank you, Jack. All right. Wheat, no doubt, is a part of our staple because if you look at the Nigerian scene, most of us love bread and so much that comes out of wheat. Now you are into wheat farming. Share your thoughts with us, how it all started as we attempt to look at our prospects as a country if it comes to self-sufficiency in wheat production. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jack, for having me here. Um, going down memory lane, as far as uh, wheat farming or wheat production is concerned, as the case may be in the country, it's a staple food that has had cause to evolve in the agribusiness space. It got the second That's right. uh, yeah. highest foreign exchange, exchange in the country, and it is not sustainable. It is not sustainable. The previous administration um, came up with what you want to call uh, the rebranding of the wheat revolution in the country, whereby uh, they made some funds available through the Anchor Browser program that 
wheat importation will have to cease uh, the kind of a success story they had a rise they want to replicate such in wheat farming was there a timeline uh, well there was no timeline but we felt okay with time things will improve and a lot of people will embrace wheat farm. farming but that is not what is happening now um as you are aware, there are so many byproducts from wheat that we consume on a daily basis. You're talking of your flour right. for making confectionaries. Right. You're talking of biscuits, noodles, your spaghetti, pasta, pasta mm. and your, I mean, bread, of course. Bread, the obviously, for chops, uh, samosa, uh, for pork. And so many other things. So these are the byproducts that you derive from wheat. And if you say you want to ensure food security in the country, and this is what people eat on a daily basis, and I think the best thing for you to do is just to focus on ensuring it is available every day for sustainability. Wheat as it were is a dry season kind of crop. Yes. Grain. You yes. know, let's put it that way. The dry season is almost here. Talking about the state of preparedness, what do you have to say about that? Well, it, it is a tough challenge uh, for us in my own association, that's the National Wheat Farmers Processors and Market Association of uh, Nigeria. We, 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 we are fully ready on our own, on our own, we have our farm locations, basically Where in are these farm eight, locations? eight states of the, country. of the country, northern part of the country. You're talking of a Jigawa state, okay. you're talking of Kano state, you're talking of Sokoto state, you're talking of Kebi state, you're talking of Adamawa state, you're talking of Gombe state, you're talking of the northern part of the Kaduna. Kaduna and Nasarawa states. What yeah. about Plato? Because Plato has the most temperate of all the states. I mean, it's... Uh, Pla it's... Plato, Aqua Ibom Axis. Oh, okay. Yes. You know, the, 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 the Taraba, the Mambila Axis. Yes. Right. We, we, are, we, are, we are there, but we're not doing it presently on a commercial scale. All right. Oh, you are not yet, you've not yet gone commercial. We what have... you are doing now is probably some kind of demonstration? No, 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 no. We, we, we went fully into it in the 2020, immediately after the COVID. We planted in five states. We did the same thing in 2021 through the Anchor Browser program of the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, and it was a huge success right. for us, as the case may be. And we'll hold your thoughts. The program will continue in a short while. The program is Agriculture in Focus, and we are looking at our prospects of self-sufficiency you know, when it comes to wheat production. We'll be back shortly. The program is Agriculture in Focus. The world is talking about regenerative agriculture. Activity alone can be a great source of revenue. Welcome back. The program is Agriculture in Focus, and we are looking at Nigeria's prospects of self-sustainability as far as wheat production is concerned. Now, talk to us about your mission. Talk to us about your vision. Talk to us about where lies in our prospects. The current administration declared state of emergency of food security in the country, and I feel that's the way to go. And if you have such instances whereby the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Food Security in the country, uh, Baka Kari has said, oh, okay, this is what we want to do. We are ready to, 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 to help out on some commodities in the country. And these commodities are cassava, rice, and wheat in the country, whereby they're looking at planting over 500,000 hectares of these commodities. So when you have a serious government that wants to do such, there's a need for you to support. Is this land available? Because you are a player in the field. Can you say that at just this prospects or can you say this land is actually arable? Is it? I know we have land. 
But can we really put him to you? And the country has horrible lands that can get what we want, that can feed us. And the former um, president, President Mohamed Buhari, as you are aware, did a lot for agriculture. I mean, he, he, he ensured that some of the products we have, the commodities we have in the country, we are able to like grow them in here for local consumption. We're not even looking at um, foreign and uh, exports. I mean, that was why he had to like close the border to ensure that okay, the farmers in here are really, really on top of their games and they did that. And so with that, this is someone or this is uh, a government that believes that agriculture is no longer plowing of the soil, planting, harvesting for sustainability. Agriculture has evolved into what you call agribusiness. That's right. It's a full chain now, from production to processing to promotion, finally to consumption. And so you have different players That's right. in, in this chain, chain, in yeah. this chain, playing actively, mm -hmm. and there is room for everybody. And so if you are saying, if you are saying, do we really have these? arable land to match what the government is saying yes we do and it will involve a lot of people how do you intend to protect your farmer from the middleman in most instances the farmer gets shortchanged okay. correct uh, correct me if uh, i'm wrong uh, that, no no you're, you're, you're right at, at the farm gates yeah. at the farm gates you have some middlemen going there to go by but this we in our own instance we are an association for all of our farmers, we have a plan, a program, whereby we uptake all of the farm produce, produce okay. all of the farm produce. Of course, we know- From members. From members, yes, from members of the association. You of have course, them in clusters? You, we have them in clusters in these different uh, states. states. You yes. mentioned. Yes, and you know, we, we, we know the economics of production, the EOP. Yes. So, we know how much effort these farmers are putting and everything. And for us to have them on retainership with the association, of course, there's no way we want to shortchange them. We've had instances that we even had to like do some form of jingles. Oh. Yeah, we actually did that in Kano. We did that in Jigawa. We did it in Kebi. That, okay, for all of the excess produce you guys have, we are ready to buy at the current market value. Okay. That's in the open market. We are ready to buy, which we did. As we prepare to round up, I want to find out for you, looking at the future, can we possibly attain with sustainability? Permit me to use that word. Can there a time possibly come in Nigeria? We did so well in rice production. Do you think we'll be able to match same? with wheat production no no in, in all honesty no we have a long way to go that's as, what you're saying as the case maybe we shall do um good thing the Le child and business authority um has engaged in what you call in, in what you call seed multiplication if we have these improved seeds improved seeds of course who says that we should plant wheat only in dry season. We could do it equally in uh, the wet season. Do you understand? So I believe with time, we will embrace such with improved seedlings and about give it 10, 15 years. The beauty of now. this, at least we've started. We've started. Tola, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. I have been speaking with the Public Relations Officer of the National Wheat Farmers, Processors and Marketers Association of Nigeria in person of Tola Ogunobi. He has shared his thoughts on the prospects of Nigeria attaining some sense of sustainability as far as wheat production is concerned. That's been the interview segment. I will now hand you over to the good hands of Abigail's tool for some news that you can use. But always remember, this program is open to sponsorship. Thank you and welcome to the new segment of Agriculture in Focus. As fall as the 2020 World Food Prize, 
The federal government has secured a $1 billion investment for additional special agro-industrial processing zones in 24 more states across the country. The introduction of a new maize variety, Telamaze, is expected to save the country over $268 million from the annual fall armyworm infestation, as well as boost sustainable maize production, the Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology Chief Uche Naji has said. Mohamed Umar Baku of Niger State has disclosed at the first Niger Green Economy Summit that $1 billion naira will be provided by the state government to kickstart the Niger State Agri Development Fund, where the first 1,000 youth to key into the vision will benefit a grant of $1 million naira each. And now from the global scene, the Irish Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine, Charlie McCannolog, has said that the 2018 Makara Agricultural Conference that women and young farmers will continue to be given top priority by the government for improving the long-term sustainability of the agri-food sector in the country. Minister of State for Agriculture in South Asia has advocated the use of technologies to address the problem of global food wastage estimated at 3 billion tons saying it was both morally and economically necessary to reduce the food loss and wastage. This has been the news on the new segment of Agriculture in Focus. Thank you for staying with us. There's lots more coming your way. I am Abigail Stowe. Abigail Stowe, thank you so much for that news. I'll now hand you over to the good hands of Timmy Simpson for Common Sense Agriculture. Welcome to Common Sense Agriculture our low-hanging insights into farming and agribusiness. My name is Timmy Simpson. A digital transformation is happening and disrupting many major sectors of the economy. This notion of digital transformation includes, among others, the conception of innovative and digital business models that affect several traditional industries, such as transportation, banking, agriculture and others. By adopting the digital economy, agricultural production effectively promotes information exchange along the various value chains. With new infrastructures such as cloud computing and artificial intelligence, the digital economy has built an internet system for agricultural production, providing efficient and accurate technical support for agricultural green development. In the planting process, the digital economy can accurately analyze the ecological conditions, environmental capacity, and resource status of each region, and then determine the optimal amount of fertilizer and pesticide to achieve a dynamic balance between agricultural production and protecting the ecological environment. In the production process, big data dynamic matching can timely and accurately update user demand information, eliminate information asymmetry to a certain extent and help farmers to speed up the production of agricultural products with local resources based on consumer demand. In the sales process, the combined online and offline sales model does not only expand the product coverage but also promptly addresses various problems in the product sales, improves transaction efficiency and profitability, and improve the efficiency of the agricultural industry in all aspects. The common sense here is that agricultural true prosperity will be found in the embrace of the digital economy. Until we come your way again, be guided by this low-hanging insight in farming and agribusiness from Agriculture in Focus. My name is Timmy Simpson. Timmy Simpson, as always, thank you for words of wisdom. I will now hand you over to Balogun and Tony for Trending Fields. Good day and welcome to Trending Fields here on Agriculture in Focus. Now in this segment we highlight the agricultural topic trending on social media. My name is Balogun and Tony and thank you for joining us. Now for our first trend for today, the federal government along with state partners and farmers from all over the nation are stirring up a storm by turning cassava into a livestock superstar. Yes, you heard that correctly. Cassava, the same roots that's the stuff of crispy fries, is taking the agricultural world by storm. Dr. Sarah Ashnut Osia from African Union Inter-African Bureau for Annual Resources Wraps Project is throwing in some serious girl power. Now she's determined to show the super women of farming 
how to turn cassava and other crops into some seriously nutritious animal chow. Now, it's not just about feeding the critters, it's about giving women a fair shot in the agricultural. commercially red bees as nature's pest controllers. Now these bees, like tiny eco-friendly avengers, are armed with a secret weapon, a scientifically designed hive that turns them into crop-saving dynamos. Now they pick up a mere trace of pest control powers on their legs as they flit from flower to flower and voila, our crops stay pest-free and our environment stays pristine. Now it's the kind of innovation that's making agriculture as sweet as honey. Now what's even more thrilling is that this buzzwordy solution isn't picky. It's a one-size-fits-all approach suitable for crops like blueberries, sunflowers, apples and tomatoes. Whether you're running a vast garden or a tiny farm, the environmental benefits are unbelievable. Supporting sustainable farming, boosting crops and enhancing soil quality. Now, the age-old struggle between farmers and their era adversaries, starlings, black bears, and crows has taken a futuristic twist. Now, this is very interesting. Now, these pecky pests are notorious for devouring crops, causing grass to lose up to 75% of their harvest in just 48 hours. Now, traditional scarecrows and noisy propane cannons have tried to deter them, but none have truly outwitted nature's winged marauders. Now, I'll introduce you to the new hero in town the laser scarecrow. Now this innovative sentinel uses a deviously invisible green laser light unseen by us humans in the blazing sun. Birds, however, have a profound aversion to green. Now this high-tech guardian rapidly traverses fields extending up to an astonishing 250 meters, giving these avian invaders a fright they will never forget. Now beyond crop protection, it's environmentally friendly and less labor-intensive than traditional methods like netting. Some models of the laser scarecrow are even solar powered and equipped with an auto targeting system that locks onto beds like guided missiles. Now that's all for today on Training Fields here on Agriculture in Focus. If you'd like to be a part of the show, you'd like to send us your comments and your suggestions and even your feedback as to how to improve the show better, then you can follow us on all our social media handles on Instagram, Facebook, Xomali Twitter, and on YouTube. The handle is at patagro underscore media. We'd love to make you a part of the show. We'd love to see how we can improve the show to serve you better. That's all for today. My name is Balogun Antonio and do have a great day. And this is where the show comes to an end today. Do make sure you join us same time next week for yet another interesting episode. And of course, it's going to be on the same station. The program has been Agriculture in Focus. Agriculture in Focus remains a production of Pat Agro Media. Pat Agro Media is all about advancing food security and agribusiness. See you same time, same station next week. My name is Alpha Jackton. Thanks for watching.